Let's make it a good day. Coming up today, Britney Spears speaks out on social media as the documentary about her life continues to grab millions of supporters and viewers. Plus, it's the viral video everyone is purring about. I'm here live. It's not, I'm not a cat. It's all in the hot dish. Then it's the dish that can make someone fall in love with you. Like, really? Lindsay Ginsel will tell you what it is. And from producer Ted's chopper to an inspirational visit from Miss Shannon, we're opening up the Jason Show mailbag to hear what you have to say. Here we go. Let's make it a good day. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, South Minneapolis. Good morning to West St. Paul. Good morning to Shakopee. And good morning to our friends in Wisconsin. Welcome to The Jason Show. I'm Jace. Please put your hands together on your couch for my sidekick sister from another mister and the Cheesecake Factory's number one hostess, yeah. Kendall Mark, everybody. Good morning. Hey, I ate that pasta. It That's was right. good. Can we acknowledge that the Cheesecake Factory has the world's biggest menu. Biggest menu, It's yeah. like the Encyclopedia Britannica. It is, my girlfriend was a server there and I asked her about it once and she's like, oh yeah, you gotta, the whole thing, you gotta memorize it. It's, it is so thick. Yeah. That if a wild animal was coming towards you, you could throw it and it would injure the animal. <laughs> That's it's how true. thick that thing is. It's true, but they, all you need is the lettuce wraps. That's all you need. They're so good, their That's lettuce wraps there. Mm. So, so delicious. so delicious. Speaking of snacks, so yesterday, I, uh, I had a meeting with Assistant Q, with, with the Quinn, who is uh, in his mid-20s. And I say his age for a reason. So we're sitting there, and we, we get on this conversation, uh, just a silly conversation about uh, desserts. And then we started, and I said, okay, well, if you could pick one dessert, if you're on an island and you can only pick one dessert. Anyway, so we started doing that. And I go, okay, snack chips. If you could only pick one snack chip, for the rest of your life, what would it be? Mm -hmm. And I said Doritos. I could eat Doritos Solid. morning, noon, and night. And he said, he goes, Takis. And I said, excuse me, what? I had never heard of Takis. I had never heard of this snack food. I did not know about it. He looked at me and he goes, you, you haven't heard of Takis? Mm -hmm. And I said, no, I have. He goes, they're rolled up Doritos. I'm like, I, I, I don't know about this. I don't, I don't, I never, I did not hear about Takis. So I, he goes, I'll run upstairs and get some for you so you can try it. So I have them right here. America's hot new snack. Well, a decade and a half ago. But anyway, <laughs> I tried them. Mm -hmm. I tried, this is the uh, hot chili pepper and lime variety. And then he gave me the uh, crunchy fa uh, oh, fajita. Oh, multiple flavors. Yeah, the, the crunchy fajita. Which, by the way, I jokingly said uh, fajita on the show a couple weeks ago. And people went nutter. People, I got so many emails. I'm like, mm -hmm. people, I'm kidding. Anyway, so I tried them. They're very good. I now get it. Yes. So then I went on social media and I said, thanks to you know, thanks to my friend for introducing me to these. I got shamed jokingly, upside down and sideways on social media. Mm -hmm. You shamed me. Yep. Fox 9 anchor Don Stevens shamed me. Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, where have you been for the last decade? I don't know. I had never heard of these. If you've ever been to like a bodega or a Mexican grocery store, they're everywhere. Like that's what like I like that's when I first had them. So, so good. But nobody told me they were spicy because I didn't read the bag. They're very spicy. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, it's a flavor explosion. So mm -hmm. I tweeted about it. Then the official Takis Twitter account <laughs> responded to me and said, welcome to the intensity, and, and sent me a little animation. And so your I, mind was blown. So I feel like I've made it. You yes. know, Victoria Principal follows me on Instagram. Nicolette Sheridan does. No, Takis tweeted me. Mm -hmm. My career, I don't need to do anything else. Nope, nothing that, else. You gonna hey, eat all those, by the way? I'll have some. You can have them, I'm done. I just, a little dabble do ya. They're good, <laughs> but I, I just, yeah. Yeah. Give me a Dorito. I don't need anything more fancy than a Dorito. That is a fun joke, though. Honestly, if it's someone that you know is going to be fine, blah, blah, blah. Um, if you tell them that it's a new Cheeto flavor and you don't show them the bag and they're like, 
Yeah. And their mouth is on fire. It's really fun. Well, thanks to the Takis people. I love you. Kendall, <laughs> there's something up with your mic, by the way. What did I do? Is it caught on fabric or something? It's rubbing. Hello? No, well, fix it. Okay. It's time for the hot dish, everybody. Here we go. Roll it, Leo. Let's get going. <laughs> okay. Britney Spears is opening up after that New York Times documentary on Hulu that I told you about. She posted this video, take a look on Twitter, saying, can't believe this performance of Toxic was just from three years ago. I'll always love being on stage, but I am taking the time to learn and be a normal person. I love simply enjoying the basic aspects, the basics of everyday life. Now, look, this is what I thought. This comes as no surprise. Of course, she's trying to learn to be, and I don't like the word normal, but of course she's trying to get a normal life. Because if you look at the documentary, and we went into it depth, I won't go back over it, watch the show from yesterday on our YouTube channel, but you see there was nothing normal about how Britney came up. From one day, I mean, there's not a lot of overnight success stories, but she really was overnight. She went from performing in front of 12 people in a mall courtyard to hundreds the next day, to thousands the next week. And everybody around her, they were not prepared for fame. So how could they prepare this little girl for fame? So no wonder she has a skewed view of the world. Um, so to quote that guy, leave Britney alone. Let her, let her enjoy a normal life. Let her plant flowers. Let her go to the grocery store and make funny videos. And you know, I'll own it too. When she first started doing her Instagram photos, I, or her videos, I was, you know, I didn't make fun of her. I, don't, I, I paused on that. But I wanted to kind of eye roll. Mm -hmm. I, you can't do that. I mean, let the let the woman be, for heaven's sake. I did watch it last night, and I it was interesting to me. I remembered why I loved her so much growing up. Yeah. And then you see what happened, and you see how everybody kind of played her into this Vultures. person, and it just is really it it's really sad. So I agree. Let that girl live her life, but let, free Britney. Yeah. Let her be, everybody. Uh, framing Britney on Hulu. Next in the dish, we are 11 months into the pandemic, and just when you thought everyone had figured out how to Zoom, think again. This is the best video of the year. A lawyer in Texas got a little too carried away with Zoom filters. Watch. Ponton, I believe you have a filter turned on in the video settings. Uh, you might want to uh, uh, take, take We're a trying look. to, we're tr can you hear me, Judge? I can hear you. I think it's a filter. It, in the it is, and I don't know how to remove it. I've got my assistant here. She's trying to, but uh, I'm prepared to go forward with it. That's, I'm here live. That's not, I'm not a cat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just be clear. Um, that's my favorite part. Judge, I'm here. I just want you to, I'm not a cat. I swear, I'm present. I'm not a cat. Is there anything better? The world is horrible right now. That is the best thing of the week. It is. I loved the judge's response, too, because he's been asked about it since, and he was very nice. He was like, I don't want people to make fun of him. It happens. I think it just shows how we can still have, you know, court online. We've, I mean, he just did a big PR spiel, essentially. But to hold it together when that's happening, oh. you'd be like... Because for those of you who don't know on Zoom, you can have filters. Mm -hmm. And that's why, and as you talk, the filter that you choose talks. So that's why it's like the kitty moved, the kitty's mouth and eyes moved as the, the lawyer was talking. <laughs> so funny. We thought it would be fun. We were going to do the whole show as like an alligator or something. I thought mm -hmm. I would just put a filter. Yeah, big mouth. Better than looking at this mug. But anyway, next in the dish, Mike Tyson, Audrina from the Hills. Did I pronounce her name right? You're mm -hmm. a Hills, yeah. Pete Davidson. Shia LaBeouf, those are just some of the celebrities with hideous tattoos. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Go out there and be yourself, opinion. kids. Yeah. <laughs> Ted wrote that. I didn't write that. We can add another one to the list. Heather Ray Young. She's one of the stars of Selling Sunset and the fiance, the fiance of Flip or Flop star uh, Tarek. Well, it's on her lower back and it says, Yes, sir. El, uh, yes, sir. Mr. El Musso, my, oh, 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 oh. she says it's very meaningful, so meaningful that she has since deleted that Instagram post. <laughs> oh, snap. I, here's what, what I feel. What? How do you feel? Tell Look, me. Again, as I say at the end of the show, girl, go out there and be yourself. 
Da da da. Da da da. Da da da. There's an addendum to that. Uh -huh. There's an asterisk. Uh -huh. Mariah Carey once said, never get anybody's name tattooed on you. Unless maybe it's your mom. Because your mom's always going to be there. But I don't, I mean, I love Colin. I'm not going to get yes sir Colin on my arm. <laughs> Oh, God, that would, that would never, ever happen. And, like, the placement? Uh, yeah, in the back? No, 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 no. Yes, sir. That is creepy. That is real creepy. It's so, I can't tell you how creepy it is, but y'all can make it up yourself. You know why. You guys watching, you know why it's creepy. Mm-hmm. I cannot. I cannot. No. I I'm wanna, sorry. I want to get a tattoo eventually of the South Fork logo. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, weird, but not creepy. Right. Again, I'm not going to say whatever you whatever you desire. No, no. I mean, there's so much left that I want to know, but then I don't want to I don't want to know it either. I like, don't want to know anything else. But I do. Don't oh. you want to know? No, because he. Mm -mm. No. He gives you the heebie-jeebies because he gives me the heebie-jeebies. He by himself kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. There's something about him. I like the show. I love Flipper Flop, and I actually think the show is better after they're divorced. Unpopular opinion. Oh, yeah. Oh. The show is way better. I watched a marathon this weekend. Go back and watch. Way better. There's more electricity. Dot, dot, dot. There's something about him. Don't know. Hmm. Uh, hey, before we go to break, everybody, uh, we, have a, we have a good show. I just want to send love, and, and it seems empty uh, saying this, because anytime there's a tragedy, and unfortunately I've had to say this a lot on the show, it seems empty, but I mean it from all of us here on the show. Uh, we want to send love to anybody affected by, uh, by the shooting yesterday in Buffalo. Uh, we love you, uh, we're with you, and uh, God bless you. We'll be back after this. We're not done with the dish. Coming up next, why are folks coming for the Kardashians this time? And why I'm actually on their side. Then, is Hollywood remaking The Wizard of Oz? Ugh. Also ahead, what dish can make you fall in love? Is it shrimp? Is it chicken? Is it broth? Our friend Lindsay Ginsel will join us with the answer. And a popular podcast asks the question, how are we still married? The host will join us live. That and more when The Jason Show continues. this because the people bring this your name up a lot with this uh, Marvel show WandaVision. WandaVision, do people bring that up to you regularly? Yeah, they're like, when are you going to pop up? When are you going to pop up? Yeah, when and are you going to pop up? That's that's what that's the question I want answered. When am I going to pop up? I, I want to be in a Marvel show. You do? I mean, Is there yes. anything in particular you have your like sights on? Is there a character or a spot or a movie franchise? Any of them? What? Well, I mean, come on, uh, uh, Black Panther seems a little too obvious, but uh, I think I would fit there. But, and, you know, my, I just want my character to wear comfortable shoes. That's the only thing I need. <laughs> That's and and I, I don't even have to fly fly. Just, I just, just a little bit off the ground. Just, just let me hover. Just, you know, that's all. All I need. Yeah, a, a hover loafer type of character would be great for you. Oh. That would be great. Like, you know, a superhero that's not quite totally super. Mm -hmm. They did a show on that in the 80s called The Greatest American Hero. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be great, though. Just, you know, minimal superpowers. Like, look at me. Oh, wait, maybe not. Yeah. I can just hover right above 494. <laughs> and I can only watch. I can't do anything. Yeah. But that's all I would need. I would just want to hover above traffic. If I could have one superpower, yes. I would like that. Just, I want to fly a little bit. You want to fly your terrified just a little of, bit. like, don't you not like heights? I don't like heights. That's why I said a little bit. I want to just fly. So when there's someone driving slow in the left lane. You can just float. I just want to uh, go over them. Okay, yeah. So you'd rather float. Like there was a guy this morning. Oh, Lord. In a minivan. Mm -hmm. I won't, won't identify him, but it was dark blue and it had Wisconsin plates. <laughs> and he had glasses on and brown hair. But, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to identify yeah, him. Yeah, I don't want to give him away. Mm -mm. He's heading into Eden Prairie around yep. 450. Mm -hmm. Wanda Sykes uh, on Kimmel last night. Love her. More late night. A few weeks ago, Rob Gronkowski was on the Late Late Show after the team advanced to the Super Bowl. Well, he said... 
that he celebrated by eating a cheesy burrito with extra sour cream, and he planned to celebrate with another burrito if his Tampa team won. Well, hello, they won. So last night, Gronk was back with some disappointing news. And I was starving in the locker room uh, by the end of it. It was like two hours after the game, and there was no food left. I was disappointed. If I had a burrito, I would have smashed that thing like no other. I would have put extra <laughs> queso, extra guac, extra sour cream, whatever it was. But instead, I had to settle with like a protein shake in the refrigerator, like pre-made. That's not the post-game meal I want after the Super Bowl win, man. I want a huge burrito, a burger, something like that. But... You know, yesterday, today, I've been splurging all day. I just had a burger, tater tots, sweet potato fries. You name it, I've been eating it for the last two days. Attaboy. <laughs> I love him. You've heard me say it before. I don't like bros. Mm -mm. I don't, dude, I don't, he's the only bro I like. Yep. I love him. I, I love him. him. I love, do you, have you, do you know who his girlfriend is? I have no idea. Okay, well, she was a Sports Illustrated supermodel, swimsuit model. She was a former cheerleader, and she's just, like, goofy and likes to dance and have fun, and the two of them together just seem like the couple you would totally go out to drinks with and just have a great time. I'll go back through my old copies of the swimsuit issue and, and see if I can okay. find her. Camille, yeah. Because I collect those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't. Really hide them under the bed. Yeah. yeah. Gronk says he hopes to play again next year. He was at Disney World, too. Because, you know, when whoever wins the Super Bowl, what are you going to do next? I'm going to Disney World. Mm -hmm. So he, he went to the Star Wars ride and had a lightsaber duel with a kid. I loved it. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Next in the dish, John Oliver appeared on Colbert last night and talked about the Super Bowl. Hello, CBS. Yeah. And in particular, John freaked out. Well, they both freaked out when they talked about the fact that John Oliver is the same age as Tom Brady. Look at this. Big takeaway for me. Is, and I was not aware of this going in. I'm the same age as Tom Brady. And really? That. You're does 43? Not, it, does, it does not fit. I know. <laughs> you know My goodness. My goodness. Tone. I thought the Irish aged quickly. Just <laughs> collagen. Does, collagen supplements does. and up. Always up, John. Up. Like Feels this. like people fall into two camps, right? It, there's one group of people who you tell someone your age and they'll go, wow, you look great. And there's another group, you'll tell people their age and they'll go, oh, f And I think I'm in camp two. It is hard to believe. I love Oliver. Mm -hmm. But if you put, well, it, 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 uh, uh, what's his face? Um, 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 Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Yeah. He only eats like special water from a well or something. I, and the then magical he, well. The magic, mm -hmm. and he, only, he doesn't eat sugar, he doesn't drink. Yeah. He only eats berries and like twigs. So if you do all of that, of course you're going to look like Tom Brady. Yeah, I mean, he and Giselle definitely have a very regimented diet, how much water they drink, how they work out, what comes into their home. If they go to the Super Bowl again next year, and they won't because it'll be the Vikings, but if they do, we should try that diet for a couple days and see how we do. Should we, though? No, it's a horrible idea, and please scratch this from the record. <laughs> Well, look, just Tyler, like them, Jason. Tyler, can you destroy this tape a little bit later today? I don't want this brought back up next year. Green juices all day. Every Jason meal. said he's going to eat that. Season 8, by the way, of Last Week Tonight with John Oliver returns to HBO and HBO Max on Sunday night. I love, I love Last Week Tonight. Next in the dish, Kim Kardashian's daughter, uh, North, is apparently a very talented painter. But don't tell the internet that. Kim, look at this, everybody. Kim posted this picture on her Instagram stories. And her followers would not believe her. So much so that she posted a lengthy, lengthy, and I don't like to use this word a lot, but it is a rant, and a, but deservedly so, saying, don't play with me when it comes to my children. She says her daughter has been taking oil painting class and worked hard on that painting for several weeks. Let's, let's put on the shelf whether it's real or not. I personally think it is. Mm -hmm. There are geniuses. Look at Tiger Woods when he was a kid. There are geniuses in, in children, examples of genius all the time in kids. Mm -hmm. Let's put on the shelf whether it's real. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's on the shelf now. Why are grown adults attacking a child? Why are grown adults going after a kid about anything on the internet? You know why? Because you're, you're losers. If you have that pathetic of a life that you have nothing better to do than jump uh, bravely behind your keyboard filled with Cheeto dust and attacking a child, you're a coward and you're a loser. That's what you are.
You are. I mean, you're going after how mm -hmm. old is the kid? Seven. You're punching down. You know, and mm -hmm. I don't. You know, I don't like the the overuse of the word bullying because you know bullying is a power imbalance. Mm -hmm. You are a 30, 20, 40, 50 year old basically attacking a child. And I don't love the, this is me. I don't love the Kardashians. Don't, don't come at a kid for heaven's sake. I know, I think, well, and so in the past, one other time she, North performed with her dad, who by the way, who cares what you think about Kanye personally? He's an artist. He is an artist. Yeah, it is not I, that I hard to believe. I can't even argue that. You're right. Yeah, it's not that hard to believe that his kid would be artistic, right? So she sang with him once, and people compared it to another young girl who's on YouTube that's a singer that young kids like, I guess. Anyway, Kim right away said, she was. I didn't mean to not claim that it was your song. She was super inspired by Zaza. Thank you so much. So Kim is now like, wait, I'm not, I'm the first person to tell you if something's fake. Why are you trolling my kid who's really proud of herself and what she's done? I, I, I think it's awful too. It's awful. It's awful. Kids, you don't, you don't go after kids. Awful. Next in the dish. Oh, it's two worked up stories right together. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Oof. Next in the dish. New Line Cinema is working on an adaptation of The Wizard of Oz. And they have selected who's going to direct the film. The woman behind Watchmen, Nicole Castle, will direct the project. Apparently, the powers that be liked what she did with the HBO series and were looking for a visionary filmmaker to reimagine the classic film, the iconic film, the masterpiece, the original Wizard of Oz with Judy Garland from 1939. I don't, let me say this very clearly. No. No. We can move on. But we won't. This is, this is ridiculous. There are certain things in pop culture that you should never touch. You should just never touch. The most beloved movie on the face of the planet is one of those items. You should not touch it. You should not remake it. The only asterisk is Wicked, uh, the, the Broadway musical, because that's an original story. It's not trying to recreate The Wizard of Oz. It tells different lessons. That's it. You should not touch The Wizard of Oz. Why? Why are you remaking something that's already perfect, that's beloved around the globe? Riddle me that. Uh, taking nothing away, I'm sure she's a visionary. I don't know a lot about her. I'm sure she's visionary, but you don't, you don't touch the Wizard of Oz. You don't touch the Wizard of Oz. You don't touch the Wizard of Oz. I kind of knew it. Don't stab me with that. It's throwing that pen at me. Do, I ordered a cardboard uh, cutout. Uh, Tyler, can you see, I ordered a cardboard cutout for when she does this, so we yeah. just move the cardboard. The Do we have it in yet? The free Britney people actually took it back because it was a Britney Spears cutout. But the point being, I think I could really enjoy watching this. You brought up Wicked, which I'm glad you did. I loved the book Wicked and the musical Wicked, both, of course, playing off of that story. How do we know that this isn't going to play off The Wizard of Oz, not be a musical? What are you doing? No, continue talking. Okay, it's replacing me, everyone. No, go ahead. Let's so you would, you would watch this? I would watch this. I would really, I would genuinely watch this and I'm very curious how they would do it. I okay. This is what he's No, it's fine. Don't worry about it. No, it's fine. No, I'm are you done? I just Who are you calling? Shane? No, don't worry about it. I'm I'm not calling anybody. Yeah, I'm calling Shane. I'm <laughs> calling Shane to see if she's available and to see if she can come in cuz okay. um I'll leave her a message if she's not available. She's rolling she's, me into voicemail. I think she's at that's C how close we are. She's, she's that's that's how close Shane and I are. She's rolling me into voicemail on live television. She's busy. Well, I'll text her. See if she's available to come okay. in. Okay. Still ahead. <laughs> Still ahead. We'll chat with a couple behind uh, a podcast about how their marriage has been so successful, even in a pandemic. But next, Valentine's Day is almost here. And if you need a recipe to knock your significant other's socks right off, Lindsay Ginsel has that recipe. That and the return of Shane when we return. Back in a moment. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Valentine's Day is coming up this weekend, and if you don't have plans, our next guest has a recipe that can help take your relationship to the next level. Please welcome back to the show our love mistress, Lindsay Ginsel. Good morning, Linz. Ooh, I love being called the love mistress. I love it. Okay, uh, now I teased, I said, what is this food? Is it brats? Is it tacos? Is it roast beef sandwiches? What is the secret food item, Lindsay? 
So this actually goes back to the 80s. Let's set the scene. We're in New York City at Glamour Magazine, and a poor young woman is just desperate for an engagement ring. And a much older, much wiser woman, maybe the love mistress, passes along a recipe for engagement chicken. Uh, I'm sorry. Did you say engage? <laughs> you said engagement chicken. I did. I did. This thing is the best of food urban legends. And I got to tell you, Jason, so when I learned about this, which was just last year, I was listening to a podcast about the royal family and found out that Harry and Meghan got engaged over a roast chicken, and all of a sudden, engagement chicken was back at the forefront. Okay, so what exactly? I see a chicken in front of you. It looks like a mighty fine, it lo Lindsay, nope. It looks like a mighty fine chicken. But what makes it special? It's what, pretty simple. Yeah, what makes it an engagement chicken? That's what's so funny is when I started researching this recipe, I thought it was going to be something that was incredibly time consuming and extravagant or exotic. And it's literally a roasted chicken with lemon and salt and pepper. But I think the concept behind engagement chicken is the time and energy and love that you put into making the chicken. And it shows your partner that you're capable in the kitchen because every single person should be able to make a roasted chicken. Okay, uh, I, will, I will reveal this here, Lindsay. I, have, I, I cook, I bake, uh, but I have never, I'm one of those people, Lindsay, I've never made a roast chicken. We're looking at you making it right now, bottom lining it for us, how do you do it? So the first thing that I'm gonna say to you is you're gonna wash your hands a lot because as we know, Chicken spreads germs. It's very easy to cause food poisoning. So just number one thing, anytime you touch the chicken, you're going to wash your hands. And then essentially you're going to cover the bird inside and out with some lemon juice, fresh lemon juice, salt and pepper. And then this is the really sexy part, Jason. You're going to shove two lemons right up the bird. Wait for the money shot. It is coming. It is coming. Okay, here we go. Up, 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 up. Here we go. Wow. Look at that bird. Look at that lemon. Wait, so that's the trick, Lindsay? You put, you stuff the two lemons up in there? Yes, so you prick two lemons a couple of times, you shove it up the bird, <laughs> roast it. You're looking at about an hour and a half in the oven for about a four to five pound bird. Then just garnish it with some extra lemon, throw some mashed potatoes on the side, maybe some mac and cheese. That's kind of where the sexy comes in. The sexy's coming in with your side dishes. Okay. Now, Lindsay and I are real friends. We're not just TV friends, so I'm allowed to give her a little bit of grief. Lindsay, um, <laughs> and you know where I'm going with this. I, I, oh, I do. Um, you are a proponent. You are a cheerleader for in, in, engagement chicken. But as I look at your biography, it says, Lindsay, been dating boyfriend for six years. Um, are you serving no. like, are you serving like, engagement pigeon or what, what what's happening i think this is like the thirstiest i have ever been for attention from a man to the <laughs> point where i'm pitching engagement chicken on television mm -hmm. no we are in a mortgage i've got this guy locked down for 30 years uh, the diamond will come after covid you got him it's you got engagement chicken and a mortgage boyfriend oh yeah yeah it's wonderful you got him locked down. So ha does he enjoy, even though it hasn't gone the whole way, does he enjoy the engagement chicken? He loves the fact that he has a girlfriend who loves to cook. And he's actually a great cook, too. Yeah. He was a line cook in a, de a Jewish deli in college. So, like, we kind of hit both sides of it. He's great at breakfast. I take over dinner. Now I see some wine to the side of you. What do we have? Yeah, so my wonderful friend, Amy Waller, who's a sommelier, she's working over at France 44. I sent her the concept, and she put together four amazing wines for you to go and buy this weekend to go with your engagement chicken. So we're going to run from this side over. We've got the Kind Stranger Chardonnay. This is a non-oak Chardonnay, so if you're someone who hears Chardonnay and you cringe, doesn't have that oaky, overly buttery, buttery flavor. Really nice and tart. It's going to pair really well with the chicken. Then we've got this Brock Sellers Love. I mean, the label itself has parts on it. It is perfection for Valentine's Day. 
really nice, easy, approachable, will work well with whatever you're serving this weekend. Then we've got the Heinrich Naked. See a little trend here, kinder, yes. stranger, mm-hmm. a little love, naked. This one is strictly just great. That's all you're getting in this bottle. So it's a really fun one to try if you're someone who's looking for a really nice, pure red wine. And then finally, uh, the Splurge. This is one of Amy's favorites. This is the Brundlemeyer. It's a Brut Rosé. It's an Australian bubble, so you're going to get lots of that bright fruit. But again, set in the mood for Valentine's Day. I love it. This has been one of my favorite Lindsay Ginsel segments ever. Lindsay and her engagement chicken, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day, sweetie. Good to see you. You too. Uh, for more information, head to lindsayginsel.com. Uh, Tyler, can you check the history of our show in the annals? I think it's the first time a guest ever said, shove it up the bird. I think so, yeah. Still ahead, everybody. We're, sh- we're opening up the Jason Show mailbag when we return. Back in a moment, everybody. <laughs> shove it up the bird. Shane will be here in about 15 minutes. <laughs> Welcome back. Some woman just asked, how many times have you fired Kendall? I don't know, 20, 22, 23 times? Darling, let me just say this. If I could have a dollar every time, it would pay my salary. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's time to see what you have to say about our show. We're opening up the Jason Show mailbag. Roll it, Leo. You've got mail. That's right. First up, many of you, uh, I, we love this. Uh, I woke up to this, and this just filled my heart. So many of you responded to our interview with our dear friend Shannon Paul yesterday. Jill says, Shannon in your interview made my week. Such a beautiful human and her beautiful son. Yeah, everything about that is correct. And Alyssa says, Shannon is a pro. The love and patience she gave her son during the call uh, was a world apart from the shushing and embarrassed swatting I see other parents doing on calls when a kid needs their attention. I love Miss Shannon and her quote, cyclone kid. Yeah, uh, it was great to see, and you know why? Because I think uh, it touched so many families universally, but I I know for families uh, where they have individuals with autism in their family, Mm -hmm. I think it just, it, 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 Shannon is such a great mom, you know? Mm -hmm. And she, you know, not handles the wrong word, she treats her son with such respect. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't care, it's a silly TV segment. I don't care, right. it, you know, and Shannon just never, we said it when we got off the air, Shannon didn't miss a beat. Nope. Didn't miss a beat and at the same time, still showed love to her son. Right, she's got a heart of gold. Uh, mm-hmm. and she's uh, uh, the best, period. Next up, we got several questions. <laughs> we got several questions about producer Ted's, uh, about producer Ted after Friday's staff show. We saw Ted, here it comes, right there. We saw Ted <laughs> chop up some vegetables with his special gadget while cooking. Well, you can imagine, and we knew this was gonna happen. We got a lot of questions. Robin asks, Ted, where did you find that chopper from Friday's best thing ever episode? So uh, let's ask Ted, he's in the control room. Ted, what's the name of that chopper? Thanks for the question, Robin. Oh, hilarious, Leo. Nice. All right, put this away. Get these away. These are freaking me out. Uh, to answer your question, uh, I have no idea where I got it. I don't know what the brand name is. Uh, but if you just Google vegetables and chopper, hopefully you'll be able to figure it out. Uh, get these, get these cats out of here. How come we haven't won an Emmy? I don't know. <laughs> How come? Really? The opera wins every year. Why haven't we won an Emmy? I don't know. When we're putting on quality entertainment like that. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Whatever, Emmy people. <laughs> we're not bitter. <laughs> Mark, Mark has one of my favorite. Okay, if don't put it up yet, Leo. This sincerely, because you know I don't take this stuff seriously. This is one of my favorite comments of the last six months. Go ahead, Leo. You're so inspiring, Jason. I'm a heterosexual, but I love watching you and feeling your wonderful attitude. Mark. I love it. Mark. Mark is getting real. Mark's like, look, I'm straight. I'm straight as the Marlboro man, but I like you. 
So thank you. Mark, you know, Mark, very straight. Me, as gay as a love boat reunion party. You know what I mean? <laughs> and together we find common ground. It's true. Finally, a good reason to follow our show on Instagram. All this week, we're, oh Lord. All this week, we're sharing throwback pictures of me during my TV career. Uh, you know, I started here in 2000, uh, WCCO in 1997, and we're counting down to Monday's show when we start to look back at my TV start and revisit some classic interviews. So this is what we call the faux hawk era. <laughs> I had a faux hawk for a good number of years and a bad dye job. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was, it was a light brown. It was a thing. It was a look then. Thank Give you, sweetie. Give yourself some credit. Oh, thank you. You're back on now. <laughs> I won't call Shane. You're back on. She can turn around. <laughs> uh, you can see it, by the way. You can, uh, on our social media, just search for Jason Show TV on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You'll see that photo on our Instagram page. And stay tuned to it because every day, producer Jeff, he has, an, he has just a truck full of embarrassing photos that will be loaded each day. And he's going to dump that truck until we do this. Hey, guys, still ahead. We're chatting with a couple behind the podcast. How are we still married? That and more when we come back. Back in a moment. So I'm a heterosexual, and I love you. Welcome back, my friends. As we approach Valentine's Day this weekend, relationships are on the minds of so many. After an unprecedented, that's a way to put it, 2020, many relationships are put to the ultimate test. <laughs> Could you not kill each other locked in a house? Some uh, may have even asked the question, how are we still married? One couple asks that question every week on their hit podcast of the same name. Joining us live are the host of How Are We Still Married? Ted Ishler and Beth Albright. Good morning, Ted and Beth. Hi. Good, good morning. How are How you are guys? How are you, Jason? Great. I'm, I, I, what a great look. There's a podcast for everything. There's a, a podcast for peacocks and lunchboxes, but this is such a great idea. So I want to know, where. what was the catalyst for this, guys? Well, I, I think whenever we go to parties or anything, we talk to people and tell them our story, they always say, at the end of it, we're like, how are you still married? Right. Like, well, <laughs> let's, let's into something. <laughs> because we don't know the answer to that. I think we've moved so many times and did so many things. We never had a chance to stop and go, do I even like this guy anymore? I don't know. Because, <laughs> yeah, you guys tell everyone this is when people are going to, like, put down their cornflakes. You guys have been married for 35 years and you've moved 35 times. Did I get that right? Yes, That, that is did. true. And I'm, not, I'm not sure why we're the media business uh, as well and it moved around a lot especially early on in our, our marriage we sometimes, sometimes stay places six months four, four that, months like three months um we made a marriage promise when we when we got married we said whoever had the highest paying job in the largest market the other person would have to quit their job and move and we actually stuck with that so the problem was we would get to some place and immediately the person that was down on their luck would start looking for a job and get one, and then the other person would have to quit their job and move. And some of the pictures so. you're seeing there, <laughs> uh, I, I was a page at NBC early on, and we used to sneak onto the sets and take kissing pictures and things like that. That was in New York City. And then in, in Hollywood, we, we've been all over the place. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we have all sorts of crazy stories. And, Insanity. And we, and we just are trying to figure out, I, I think it, it's... <laughs> to us too to try to figure out how are we still married i hope it comes out uh, with the right answer when all this is over. well so yeah. and beth you correct me if i'm wrong you you were, might look familiar to folks especially daytime folks you were on days of our lives in the 90s am i right on that i was yes i was that was that was the end all be all like i couldn't even believe it um and soon after that probably eight months in we had been trying to make another human and we we finally got pregnant and I, I, it went, went into this nesting thing like immediately. So then I just wanted to move home to my mother. We talk about that on the show and it's like, oh my God, that was always a, a riding theme, my mom. Yeah, and, and the mother was in Alabama. So we leave LA to move to Alabama just to have our son. I was a writer on Candy Camera at the time. It's like, are you kidding me? Are we, we're doing that? Okay. So we're going back over these stories and thinking, 
So, mm. I, so I'm yes, curious. We're even reminding each other, like, oh my God, I can't believe that happened. I forgot no. about that. You know, one time we went for a job interview and found out the boy was in a basement pretending to be a program director and he was 13 years old. We drive up to the house and knock on the door. Like, oh, okay, it's a real job. So, well, that brings, me, that brings me to this. 35 years, you obviously know a lot about each other, but going to, going to this past year with COVID, with basically... Uh, being locked in a house together, did you guys discover anything new? Hmm. Well, I think we discovered that we actually do like each other. We oh, were trying, that's we were trying... sweet. <laughs> I think I, I'll I'm... keep him. Yeah, see, it's so. Uh, <laughs> because, you know, we've moved so much and we've had so many things. We're always saying, well, we don't even know if we have time to like each other. And so through this, we, we discovered that. Oh, there are some yeah, little irrit really irritating friends. things, like how she talks over me. No, well, I'm it's kidding. called chemistry. Yeah. But it, it's really, it, it's really, to me, it's very rewarding. You know, I, Ted and Ted my best friend and I got a chance to marry my best friend and run around all over the country with him and it's it's just really been the best even though people think oh my god Beth you don't have it figured out yet and you're how old we don't have it figured out yet and and some of the kids that I teach are like oh oh my god you don't have it figured out yet I feel better about myself <laughs> well what would you say I mean you guys are I mean you really are as close to experts as we've ever had on the show before we go leave us with leave all the couples out there that have maybe have been struggling through COVID what's your best advice well, I would say just, uh, you know, give each other a little space, but then, you know, just enjoy this time. I mean, this is such an unusual time. I think being able to, to have the time together and maybe get to re-know each other a little bit. Yeah, and, and I would say let the other person be themselves. Instead of trying to always fix each mm. other, like I really wish he'd not be so messy in the kitchen. It's an explosion, like I live with pig pen. Uh -huh. Just like give him his face, be glad you have each other, be glad you can have somebody to go through life with, someone to witness your life and, and start to focus more on what you do like rather than what you don't like and let them be themselves. Guys, this, this went oh so fast. Will you guys please come <laughs> back sometime so we can talk more? We would love to. Absolutely, Absolutely, Jason. Love your show. We have to watch it online, of course, because we're in California. But you are such a talent. Oh, th oh, thank you. That means a lot. Please, please, please come back. Ted and Beth, thank you so much. And everyone, support the podcast once again. It's called How Are We Still Married? New episodes drop weekly, and it's available wherever you find your podcasts, like Apple, Spotify, Google, and Sam Goody. Uh, go to stillmarriedpodcast.com for more. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after these words. Back in a moment, everyone. They were great. Welcome back. Pat and Beth, I love them. I hope you guys liked them. Let us know on their Facebook page. I want them back. They were great. They were really great. And Sounds we, like enter entertaining and interesting. Yeah, and we said it during the break. You can always tell TV people they know how to... Say something and move on. Mm -hmm. Hey, don't forget to sign up to be part of our uh, virtual audience. Just go to the Jason Show Facebook page, Jason Show TV, and click the link we posted. Sign up for a certain day, and you'll be part of the show. Okay, today's uh, secret bubblegum goodbye question. If you have a day off during the week, what would you do? Hmm. The answer when we return. <laughs> hmm. Go Bubblegum goodbye. If you had a day off during the week, what would you do? Ladies first, Kendall? I'd clean first. Yeah. And then I'd probably go to lunch with like my mom or a girlfriend who has odd shifts and drink some wine at lunch. Then yeah. do a little shopping, a little boutique, a little antiquing. Sounds fabulous, doesn't that, it? It sounds fantastic. Yeah, what would you do? Well, okay, the non fun answer is run errands, yeah. you know, because everything's open, it's slower. Uh, but the fun answer would be nothing. I would, I like to, I call it padiddle. I just, I like to sit on the couch with the dogs by myself. I like my alone time and just aim, just needlessly, mindlessly watch shows, huh. guilty pleasure shows. Yeah. Not slanting. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm so happy because again, it's not a complaint, but mm -hmm. I talk a lot <laughs> right. during the first hours of the day. So it's like the cobbler's kid has no shoes. The accountant that can't balance his checkbook mm -hmm. when this is done. I like to just like my drive home. I listen. I don't have anything on. I just sit in silence. So 
I get a day it. off. I just like to sit with the dogs. I get it. We've done like we've done road trips. Like my sisters and my mom and I will all plan a day off together, and we'll like go to Stillwater for the day. Or that's that's yeah. fun too, because then it's people you know, so you yeah. can talk, but you can also be silent. That's what I realized. You know, the older you get. I only, you only really like to be around like a certain group. Your group gets mm -hmm. smaller, I think, for a reason. And you appreciate the people that you do have in your life. And I'm really grateful for my mom and, and Colin and my friends and Jen and Lisa. I, I'm very grateful because it, there, nothing's better than being around people that you can sit in silence with mm -hmm. and you're not uncomfortable. That's, right. that's a gift right mm -hmm. there. Uh, we have a good show coming up tomorrow. And don't forget, if you want to see some great throwback photos leading up to Monday when we're looking back at uh, 20 years here at Channel 9, go to Jason Show TV to look at that embarrassing photo. But right now, that is going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe out there. Drive safe, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.